time, Station KID-TV brings you the special event of the year, a first in television history. At this very moment, KID-TV has standing by a television crew at Santa Claus Workshop. And in just a few seconds, our special correspondent, Andy Henderson, will bring you a person-to-person -person interview with Santa Claus himself direct from the North Pole, where at the moment, the temperature is 91 degrees below zero. And now KID TV takes you via Telstar, Andy Henderson at the North Pole. Hi, kids. This is Andy Henderson at the North Pole. Ooh, it's cold up here. <laughs> From this spot, there's only one direction you can go, and that's south. <laughs> Living up here is pretty rough. I don't see how Santa stands it. <laughs> Since we've been here, we've eaten nothing but frozen food. At least that's the way it is by the time we get it. <laughs> and now, let's take a look-see into Santa's workshop. Hello again. Boys and girls, it's just weeks before Christmas, and Santa and his helpers are working overtime to make sure that there's enough toys for the kids all over the world. Santa's a pretty busy man, but I'm sure he'd like to say a few words to you kids. Hello, Santa. Oh, hello, son. Oh, oh, hello, boys and girls. <laughs> hey, oh, it's Andy. You caught me at a very busy time. Well, uh, <laughs> do you think you'll be ready by Christmas Eve? Well, we've never disappointed the kids yet. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, is it true that this year there's a rumor that you're going to use a rocket sled? No, sorry. We're going out the good old-fashioned way with my reindeer. Prancer and Dancer and Dunder and Blitzen and Vixen and Nixon. Uh, Nixon, oh, I get, I, oh, I always can't son it, I get those names mixed up, but the kids know their names. <laughs> Santa, there you are. We have so much to do, and you stand here dawdling, talking to this visitor. Mr. Anderson, this is Mrs. Claus. Uh, we're, dear, we're on television. How do you do, Mr. Anderson? Ma'am? Now, I want you to go and finish painting those hobby horses. Television? Did you say we're on television? Oh, oh, dear. Oh, why didn't you tell me? Oh, my hair's a mess. <laughs> Hello there. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> Come along, Mr. Anderson, and I'll show you some of the new toys we're turning on. How's it going, Winky? Everything is A-OK, -okay, Santa. Good man. <laughs> Winky is in charge of our space department. Ah. Oh, uh, now here, here is the latest toy rocket. It runs on real rocket fuel. Really? Oh. I've been wondering, what is this strange little creature over here? Oh, uh, Winky made that. That's his idea of a Martian. A Martian? <laughs> Wowie, wow, I'd hate to meet a creature like that on a dark night. <laughs> I wonder if there really are people on Mars. Well, who knows? Well, if there are, I hope they have someone like you up there, Santa, to bring joy and good cheer to all the Martian children. Oh, Mr. Anders. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, keep going, Winky. Christmas Eve is coming soon. Now, Mr. Anderson, I want to show you some more things. Drapo! Drapo, you lazy good-for-nothing, where are you? Drapo. Drapo, wake up! Wake up! <laughs> Stand up! Turn up that <laughs> Stand up! Stand up! Stand up! Stand up! Oh, I'm sorry, Chief Keemar, sir. Droppo, you are the laziest man on Mars. Why are you sleeping during working hours? I wasn't sleeping, Chief. It's just that I haven't been able to sleep these last few nights. I forgot how. So I was just practicing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suggest you practice doing your work. Where's Lady Momar? 
Oh, she went to the food pill center to get some new food pills. The children haven't been eating well. No appetite at all. Well, it's no wonder. They sit in front of the video set all day watching those ridiculous Earth programs. It confuses them. Where are they? Oh, and they're watching Earth programs. Say, Santa, what have we here? These are new dolls. Now, this little doll walks, talks, cries, and she even sings. Almost like a real, live little girl. That she is, sir. That she is. All she needs is tender, loving care. Well, Ma, what is a doll? I don't know, Grandma. What is tender, loving care? I don't know either. Boma, Grandma. I told you not to watch those silly Earth programs. Now go to sleep. Must we go to sleep now, Father? I want to see Santa Claus some more. I want to see more toys. No, go to sleep. I see you're keeping busy. Oh, I've been working very hard, Lady Mobar. I've been vacuuming the room. Good. Is the master here? Oh, he's in there. And Kimar is very angry, too. Kimar, I bought some new food pills. I hope the children will eat these. We have hamburger, buttered asparagus, mashed potatoes, and a special treat for them. Chocolate layer cake pills. Mobar, I'm worried about our children. So am I. They've hardly eaten a thing in three days. It goes deeper than that. They're behaving strangely. They appear to be troubled. They don't care to sleep. I had to use the sleep spray on them again. I mentioned this to my council chiefs today, and I learned it's the same with children all around the planet in every district. Something is happening to the children of Mars. Kemar, as leader of the Martians, you must do something about it. I know. But what? Why don't you go to the forest and see Chochum, the Ancient One? He'll know what to do. He's never failed you. You speak wisely. I will go. Attention, Council Chiefs. Please report. Lomas reporting. Rigna reporting. Hargo here. Boldar? Boldar, please report. Boldar reporting. Gentlemen of the Council, we will meet immediately at Chochum's chair in Thunder Forest. What's wrong now, Kima? I don't know, Voldar, but I mean to find out. all about? We'll find out when Kimar arrives. We are probably going to seek the advice of Chocho. What does Kimar think we are? A kindergarten class? Can't we make our own decisions? Must we always come crawling to that doddering old man? Chochem is 800 years old. You can't dismiss the wisdom of centuries. I can. Gentlemen, thank you for coming. Chocha? Chocha, are you here? Ancient one of Mars, I call upon you. Chocha, it is I, Kima, and the council chiefs. We need you, Chocha.
We need your advice, Chochim. Something is wrong with our children. They eat not, they sleep not. Their only interest is watching meaningless Earth programs on the video. What time of year is it now? It is the middle of September. No, no, not here. I mean on Earth. Ah, yes. It is early December on Earth. Close to the time of the Christmas. That explains it. What is a Christmas? It is an occasion for great joy and peace on the planet Earth. And for children, it is also a time of anticipation as they await the arrival of Santa Claus. His gifts. Bah! What nonsense! What has this to do with our children, Ancient One? We have no children on Mars. They have children's bodies, but with adult minds. They do not have a childhood. I've seen this coming for centuries. They are born. Our electronic teaching machines are attached to their brains while they are in their cradles. Information is fed into their minds in a constant stream. And by the time they can walk, they are adults. They've never played. They've never learned to have fun. And now, no, they are rebelling. What do you advise? The children must be allowed to be children again. They must learn to play. They must learn what it means to have fun. We need a Santa Claus on Mars. Santa Claus on Mars? Will we get a Santa Claus? There's only one Santa Claus, and he's on Earth. <laughs> well, I guess that takes care of that. Didn't I tell you it was a foolish idea to seek advice from that old man? This is a serious matter, Voldar. And desperate problems require desperate deeds. Earth has had Santa Claus long enough. We will bring him to Mars. I'm against it. Our children are fine the way they are. I don't want any Santa Claus bringing them toys and games. They'll start playing and laughing and running underfoot. They'll become a nuisance. I've made my decision. We leave for Earth tonight. Rigner, Lomas, prepare spaceship number one. Approaching projected Earth orbit. Fire! Portside rockets, number one and number two. Portside rockets, number one and number two. Fire! Entering Earth orbit. All right, Voldar, now to find Santa Claus. Turn on your magnoscope to third power. Went over a city of some kind. So that's what the Earth people call a city, eh? How primitive. Look at all those buildings above ground. 
Why, we could destroy that city with one blast of our curie. We've not come here to destroy anyone. Our only purpose is to bring Santa Claus back to Mars. Turn to fifth power. Let's see if we can locate Santa Claus. He wears a red suit, trimmed with white fur, and he has a long white beard. But there are millions of people down there. It's like looking for a speck of space dust in a comet's tail. Wait a minute. I see him. I see Santa Claus. I see him, too. He's standing on the corner, ringing a bell. No, he's not. He's standing near the entrance of a large building next to a large black kettle. He's standing on the corner, Kima. He's... Wait a minute. I see another one. Well, there are hundreds of Santa Clauses down there. I'm going to bring them all back with us to Mars? Just one. And with so many, they won't miss one. Prepare for landing on next orbit. We interrupt our program with a special bulletin. An unidentified object has been spotted in orbit around the Earth. The Soviet Union denies it has launched any new space satellites. Our radar stations are tracking the spaceship, or whatever it is. The U.S. Air Force has alerted all defense commands and retaliatory units. Stay tuned for further bulletins. off our ship. Well, it certainly took them long enough. Boga, turn on the radar shield. Misfunctioning of radar shield. Rigna, check the radar box. Radar shield functioning. What was wrong, Rigna? A slight case of drop -off. Oh, oh, hi, Chief. What are you doing here, drop -off? Oh, oh, Well, Chief, I went to the launching pad so I could say goodbye to you, and I remembered. I've never been to Earth, so I thought I wanted to well, I may leave you there in place of Santa Claus. Now get below. I'll deal with you later. <laughs> Trouble. Get below quickly. Yes, yes, Chief. I'm sorry. I'm... Prepare to land. We'll set down in that field near the lake. Rocket silencer is set. Rotor rockets number one and two. Fire. <laughs> All this trouble over a fat little man in a red suit. Here is another UFO bulletin. The Defense Department has just announced that the unidentified flying object has suddenly disappeared from our radar screens. They believe the object has either disintegrated in space or it may be a spaceship from some other planet which has the ability to nullify our radar beams. <coughs> Uh, 
Running legs lowered. Attention, crew. This is Keymar. When we've landed, Rigna, Voldar, and I will lead the ship to investigate. Hargo, Lomas, and Droppo will stay on board on constant alert for immediate blast off. The Defense Department believes that the object spotted on our radar screens might have been nothing more than a meteor which burned up when it entered our atmosphere. Professor Werner von Green, our leading space expert, is still convinced it was a Martian spaceship. Stay tuned for further bulletins. Billy, what does a Martian look like? I don't know. Nobody's ever seen one. I don't believe there are any Martians. You don't, huh? What would you do if a Martian walked right up behind you? I scream. Betty, I'm trying to sleep. I see a Martian. Boy, you and your imagination. Come on, let's go home. Who, who are you? We're from Mars. Don't be afraid. We have children just like you on Mars. What are those funny things sticking out of your head? Those are our antenna. Are you a television set? Shh. <laughs> Stupid question. Is this what you want to do to our children on Mars? Turn them into nincompoops like these? Hold your tongue, Voldar. What's your name, little boy? Billy. Billy Foster, sir. And this is my sister, Betty. Perhaps you can help us, Billy. We're looking for one of your Santa Clauses. There's only one Santa Claus. We've seen many of them in your cities. Oh, those are his helpers. There's only one real Santa Claus, and he's in his workshop up at the North Pole. That's what we came here to find out. Let's go. Come on, you two. Let me go! Where are you taking us? Leave them alone, Voldar. What? And leave them here to inform the authorities? He's right, Kimar. We better take them along with us to the North Pole. Very well. Come along. This morning, two children disappeared mysteriously from the vicinity of Welch Lake. The police have found no clues, and it seems as though Billy and Betty Foster have simply vanished into thin air. This appears to be a day when everything is vanishing into thin air. While local police are continuing their search for the missing children, the armed forces are continuing their search for the mysterious object from space. All right, Billy and Betty. Nobody's here. Come on in. Golly! Now, I'm not supposed to bring you here. The chief's going to be awful mad if he finds us. Boy, what do the kids at home find if I was in a real Martian spaceship? Now, now don't touch it! Now, here. That's the anti-gravity generator. And these are the retro rockets. Does this light up? Only when radar waves are bouncing off our ship. Then we put up this radar screen, then nobody can find us in space. Boy, that's <laughs> pretty sharp. Yeah. What's this, Joppo? Oh, that's the elevator signal. That light starts flashing when somebody's coming up from the navigation deck. Oh, oh, oh. 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 Somebody's coming up. In the radar box, drop on. Oh, oh, no, sir. As a matter of fact, I was just looking in there to remind myself never to hide in there again. <laughs> I bet. Oh, oh, no. Approaching North Pole. I can see Santa Claus' workshop. I prepare for landing. Hargo, set the rocket silencers. 
Drabble! You stay aboard and guard those children. They must not leave the ship now. Now or ever. What do you mean, Bolgar? If we take them with us to Mars, Santa's disappearance will remain a mystery. No one on Earth will ever know that Santa Claus was kidnapped by Martians. Perhaps you're right. Drapo. Yes, sir. Get back to those children and don't let them out of your sight. Understand? Yes, sir, I understand. I'll keep an eye on you. We've landed. Secure the ship. Lomas, you remain on guard and have the ship ready for immediate blast off. Rigna, Hargo, Voldar, you'll accompany me. Come. We'll activate Torg. Torg? To capture a roly poly little man like Santa Claus? We don't need Torg. We won't take any chances. Come. Nothing can stop Torg. Swiftly, we can't afford to make any mistakes. Hargo, you cover the rear of the workshop. Rigna, Voldar, cover the front entrance. I'll direct Torg. Voldar isn't here. Rigna, go up and tell Voldar. Voldar, this is another one of your delaying tactics. You've been opposing me at every turn. Now I'm warning you, change your attitude. You finished, Chief? Yes, I am, and you will be, too, if you're not careful. Oh, but I am careful, Chief. So careful that I looked in at the children before I left the ship. You stay away from those children. That'll be easy to do. They've escaped. Voldar, if this is your idea of a joke... Ask Droppo. They overheard our plans. At this very moment, they're on their way to Santa Claus to warn him. It's true, Kima. They're footprints. We must stop them. Those children mustn't reach Santa Claus. Follow them. I'll put Torg on the trail. Torg, come out of the spaceship. Torg, come out of the spaceship. Must be 
somewhere around here. Wait, look! It's Bulldog! He's the mean one. The one who doesn't like us. Come on! Take a look. It's all right now, Betty. Come on. I'm cold. I wish it wouldn't snow. That's the best thing that could happen. It'll cover our tracks and be harder for the Martians to find us. And it'll be harder for us to find Santa's workshop. I'm scared. We'll find it. Which way is north? I see it. I see it. Santa's workshop. Where? Right there. See the light? Where? The lights are moving. Santa's house. What? What is it? I don't know. Destroy them. Crush them. Crush them, Tog. Do as I say. Oh, uh, I knew you'd try something like this. I set Torg's control so he will obey only me. Release him, Torg. You were very lucky. Now don't try to escape again. You may not be so lucky next time. Hargo, take them back to the ship, lock them up, and rejoin us. You won't get away with this, you, you Martian. Danger grows with every minute. Let's get Santa Claus and blast off. We'll surround the workshop and send Torg in to get Santa. Nobody is to be harmed unless they get in our way. Ah, no one is to be harmed. What has happened to the great warriors of our planet? Mars used to be the planet of war. Mark my words, Kima. Your softness will destroy us. Santa Claus, toys, games, laughing children. Well, we shall see. But for now, to your posts. Torg, follow me.
Get him, Torg. you come from? You're the biggest toy I've ever seen. <laughs> and very well made, too. By the great dog star, Santa's treating him like a toy. Get him, Tor. Grab him. He's become a toy. Wigna, we'll have to get Santa ourselves. Come on, Voldar. <laughs> <laughs> what have we here? More toys? <laughs> Those are Martians. Santa Claus, you're coming with us. No, you can't take him now. It's too near Christmas. Quiet, you. But... We don't want to hurt you, Santa Claus, so come along quietly. Why? Why did you have to do that to my helper? It's harmless. It'll wear off in a short while. Oh. Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? Now, you come with us. We need you on Mars. Are you sure this is harmless? Oh, I never saw such lazy people. Standing around like statues. There's work to be done. Let's get to it. Oh, me, oh, my, oh, me, oh... Oh, Mrs. Claus is going to be very angry about this. Take him, Torg. Torg, take him. Obey my command. Forget it, Kima. Rigna was right. He's nothing but a toy now. Best to leave him here. Believe me, I had nothing whatsoever to do about this. You know, my dear, I can't recall a time when you were so silent for so long. Let's go, old man. And Mrs. Santa Claus has positively identified the kidnappers as Martians. Never in the history of mankind have the nations of the world reacted with such unanimity and cooperation. Tonight, the lights will burn until dawn in the United Nations building, as the leaders of the world map a course of action. And at Cape Kennedy, our correspondent interviewed Werner von Green, the man in charge of America's Star Shock program. Mr. von Green, what is the space agency doing about this? Well, we have mobilized all the men and equipment in our Starshot project. And we have rushed our astronauts into an intensive program for the final phase of their training. Now our Starshot ship is supposed to undergo six months of test flights. But we are going to forget about the testing and go after those Martian monkeys. Isn't that risky? Of course it is risky. But every one of our astronauts is begging for the chance to go after the Martians. Who wouldn't give everything to bring Santa back to our children? and reacted yet. No radar beams being bounced off our ship. Looks like we made a clean getaway. <laughs> <laughs> ah!
How's our captain? He's having the time of his life. He's such a funny little man. Why, I have only been with him for five minutes, and he has me laughing just like an earthling. <laughs> What's soft and round, and, and you put it on a stick, and, and you toast it in a fire, and it's green? I don't know. What? A marshmallow! <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're all becoming. Marshmallows. Soft. Weak. That old man is a menace. And it was a very foggy Christmas Eve. Well, I could barely make out this chimney in the fog. But I found it all right, and I started to crawl in. Well, I tell you, it was the biggest chimney I'd ever been in. And then suddenly, suddenly I realized it wasn't a chimney at all. It was the smokestack of the Queen Elizabeth. Well, don't you think that was funny? Yes, Santa. Uh, well, why don't you laugh? Gee, Santa, it's all our fault. We told them where to find you. Oh, boulder dash in a fiddle-dee-dee, Billy boy. Everybody knows where Santa lives. Besides, I've always wanted to visit Mars. Mommy and Daddy are going to be angry. You think that's something? I can just see Mrs. Claus now. Christmas coming, and I'm not there. She'll have a fit. <laughs> oh, me, oh, my, oh, me. Come and get it. Dinner time. <laughs> Here's Droppo. If I can't cheer you up, Droppo can. He always makes me laugh. <laughs> oh, you'll have a wonderful dinner tonight. Oh, there's soup and beef stew and chocolate ice cream. No, thank you, Droppo. I'm not hungry. Come on, Billy. Oh. Well, is it all right if I have your chocolate ice cream? Sure. Oh, I just love chocolate ice cream. <laughs> mm. Gee, Mars must be a terrible place to live. Some chocolate ice cream. Pills for dinner. <laughs> I suppose if a Martian has a headache, he doesn't take pills. He takes chocolate ice cream. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Kimo, look at this. That small blip is not an asteroid. It's a spaceship, and it's on our tail. It's getting closer. Impossible, Rigna. They couldn't have spotted us. We have our radar shield on. I know that, sir, but they are gaining on us. Is it possible Earth has a secret device that can penetrate our radar shield? They have a secret device, and his name is Billy Foster. I warned you that these Earthlings are dangerous. They'll destroy us if we allow them. Well, I won't allow them. I think we underestimate the resourcefulness of these Earth people. Very clever of the boy. Make the repairs, Rigna. I'll take evasive action. Well, and how is Santa and the little earthlings? My, it must be tiresome cooped up in this little room. Say, how would you like to see the rest of the ship? You're not fooling me. You don't like us. You're mean. Oh, come on now, that's not true. Why, Santa makes everyone feel good, even me. I don't trust you. No, no, Billy boy, that's not the Christmas spirit. Why, of course, Boldar, we'd love to take the grand tour. All right, children. This room is called the... That's right. Sure. This is where you come when you're ready to go out in space. It's airtight. You put on your spacesuit and go out through that door. When you come back, the door closes and they pump air back into the room through there. When it reaches the pressure of the rest of the ship, you can take your spacesuit off. Smart lad. Where's the control that opens the door, son? Not here. 
That's in the control deck. You see, once you pull that switch, the warning bell sounds. And in 60 seconds, that door opens. That's to give us space and a chance to make a final checkup on their equipment. There's no way out in space. If that door were open now, it will pull all the air out of this room and us with it. You certainly know a great deal about space travel, son. He's going to be a spaceman when he grows up. Maybe sooner than that. Santa, that clock stopped. 60 seconds. That must be the door timer. Santa, he locked us in. Oh, I don't think so. He probably just stepped out for a moment. It's locked. I don't trust Baldor. He's not like Kira and the others. I don't like him. I'm worried, Santa. Now, now, children, let's not get excited. You were floating around out there in space. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> Santa Claus, you're all right. I, I thought you would... You well, would... when Boldar accidentally left us in the airlock and then came up here and accidentally threw the door switch, we knew we had to get out of there in a hurry or that would be the end of us. And, uh, accidentally, of course. <laughs> so he crawled out through the air duct. The air duct? But the air duct is just a little, and, and you're so big. <laughs> <laughs> Why, you're talking to Santa Claus, son. <laughs> but how? Well, well, now, you wouldn't want me to tell my secret, would you? <laughs> oh, 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 poor man. He's fainted just like someone who's seen a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Begin landing operation. Firing retro rockets. One and two. Five. Lower landing legs. Rigna. After we secured the ship and lowered the ladder, you and Hargo get Voldar out of the brig and take him to the council room. You'll stand trial immediately. All right, Chief. We've landed. Hatch open. Hatch open. Ladder down. Power off. Ship secure. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Ah, Merry Christmas, Baldor. All right, on your feet, come on. Ah. Drop him! Oh, look, I was handing these food pills through the bars, and he grabbed my 
Shut up, Rapo. Kima, come in quickly. Kima? Yes, Regner. Baldor has escaped. What? He's gone. That can only mean trouble. Put a constant guard on Santa and the Earth children. Baldor will be back. No, Bomar, I'll call you the moment he arrives. Is Drapo coming back too? Yes, Germa, now go back to your studies. Oh, Kima! Are you alone? No. Well... Earthlings, Billy and Betty. Welcome to our home. There's someone else, too. Come on, come on in. <laughs> Lady Beaumont, I'm not accustomed to entering people's homes through the door, but you have no chimney. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Santa Claus. We hope you'll make the children on Mars very happy. I'll try, dear lady. I'll try. Where are they? Where are they? Well, we'll start with my youngsters. How are they, Momar? The same. Quiet, remote, and very unhappy. They're inside studying. Well, let old Santa say hello to them. And I'm sure these children would like to meet them. I'll tell them you're here. Y over 5 pi r squared to determine the correct orbit from Mars to Jupiter, traveling along vector A through the 17th quadrant at the power of 12 megatrons. Father! Father, we missed you! <laughs> I missed you too. Children, I brought some visitors from Earth. Will you come in, please, children? Billy and Betty, this is Bomar and Germa. Hi. There's nothing in it. What are you giving me? My hand to shake. How old are you? Ten. I'm ten too. And Germa's eight. So is my sister. We have another Earth person that wants to see you. in months they've gone to sleep without the sleep spray. Santa, tomorrow we'll set up a workshop for you. It won't be exactly the same as the one you have on Earth, but I'm sure it'll serve your purpose. Good, good. Now, I'd like to get going and have the toy shop operating full blast so as I can return to Earth for Christmas. <laughs> you know, Mrs. Claus is a very good-natured woman, but... Santa I Claus, you will never return to Earth. Oh, yeah. Now you belong to Mars. Ho, ho, ho. Me, Oda, 
hiding in a dirty cave like a speckled Mars worm. Oh, Kima will get this. I'll find a way. That's easy. Let's get rid of the little fat friend in the red suit. <laughs> oh, that's suicide. Santa Claus is on the constant guard. We couldn't get within 20 feet of him without being disintegrated. But I have other plans. <laughs> Someone's approaching the cave. Oh, it's me, Jim. All right, turn off the nuclear curtain. All right, Jim, enter. What'd you find out? The, the toy shop is operating full blast. No one suspects me, so I sneaked down and took a good long look. It's nothing like the one on Earth. No one is sawing or hammering. Kimwar has built a mechanized assembly line for the old man. Toys are rolling off by the second. This planet will be flooded with toys. You know, they got one little toy. It's the cutest thing. It's just a coil spring. And it goes down steps all by itself. I was tempted to steal one. I'd like to fool around with the thing. Toys! The decay is setting in. It's even affecting you. Soon all the Martians will be blithering idiots. Well, we've no time to lose. We must go into action. Now, we cannot eliminate Santa Claus, but we can discredit him. Make him a laughingstock throughout Mars. Come on, now listen, carefully. The workshop closes at 10 o'clock. The guards will be in Kimar's house, guarding Santa Claus. Now, this is what we'll do. See, you take the left throw. <laughs> Thousands of letters from all over Mars. Yours. <laughs> Two dolls. Two dolls, yes, Patty. Three baseball bats. Three baseball bats. Look at me. Santa Claus, the great toy maker. Pressing buttons. That's automation for you. Technology. Please. <laughs> well, that's enough for the day. Let's close up shut. Pretty nice, eh? Lady Moma made it for me. Can I try it on Santa? <laughs> Don't be silly, Droppo. This would never fit you. Why, well, you have to fatten up first. <laughs> yes, well, there's another day gone, children. As they say on Earth, another day, another dollar. Well, hello, Santa. How are you feeling today? Tired? No, no, I'm not tired. But my finger is. It's been pressing buttons all day long. <laughs> well, I think I'll go in and put my finger to bed. <laughs> Dear children, here's your milk. You can play for half an hour, and then you'll have to go to bed. Daddy, may we watch the Earth program? Certainly, dear, but only for half an hour. Billy? Betty? Don't you want to watch the Earth program? Oh, no, sir. We're not interested in Earth programs. I'm going to sleep. Good night. Me, too. Just a moment. Good night, Mr. Kimar. Good night, Lady Momar. Just a moment, children. Are you feeling well? Oh, we feel fine, sir. Good night. Good night. Has someone been mistreating you? Oh, no, sir. You and Lady and Mama have just been swell to us. Good night. What could it be, Mama? They're behaving the way our children used to behave. Can't you tell, Kima? They're homesick. They miss their parents, their friends. 
Kima, you've got to send those children back. Impossible. Santa says I gotta fatten up. Hmm. Walton milk. Chocolate cake. Hmm. Banana split. Hmm. With whipped cream. isn't tired. I think I'll go down to the workshop and make some more toys. Ho, ho, ho! Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Ho, ho, ho! What's he up to now? Good morning. Good morning, Lady Moma. Oh, oh, my extra suit. The one you made for me is missing. I'm sure I brought it home from the toy shop last night. That's two things that are missing. Your suit and dropper. What? Oh, oh. <laughs> that explains it. When you find my missing suit, You'll find Droppo inside it. He's out someplace playing Santa Claus. <laughs> I'll take care of him. Oh, no, no, no. Now let him have his fun. He's probably at the toy shop making toys. He loves it. <laughs> Children, will you please hurry? Breakfast is ready. Yes, yes. If you don't hurry, your breakfast will get cold. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Rappo, we're here. He's hiding, Santa. <laughs> oh, playing hide and seek, eh? All right, Rappo. Here we come, ready or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's not here, Santa. That's funny. Oh, well, he'll turn off. Let's get started. <laughs> hey, boy. Ready? Okay. Let's go. One teddy bear and one doll. One teddy bear and one doll. I can't understand it. Well, let's try it again. What's next, Betty? One baseball bat. A uh, baseball tennis. Uh, why, uh, this will never do. The machine isn't working right. Oh, dear. What else, Betty? A toy train. A toy train. Well, all right. Here. Why, this doesn't make sense. <laughs> well, this never happened when we made toys by hand. Something very strange is happening here. Boomer, I think you had better call your father. Father? Father, this is Boomer. Yes, Boomer? Father, we're in the toy shop. Droppo isn't here. And there's something wrong with the toy machine, too. I'll be right over. It's time to go. Sim, wake up. I still think you're making a mistake. It's too dangerous walking right into the enemy camp. Team Aro's men wouldn't dare lay a finger on us. Not while we're keeping Santa Claus a hostage. Now, if we're not back in three hours, you know what to do. All right, Sim. Open the nuclear curtain. Just a word of warning. If you've got any big ideas, forget them. If you walk through that nuclear curtain, you'll be disintegrated like that. Sabotage. Somebody switched all the wiring. Droppo's gone, your suit is missing, and now this machine's been sabotaged. Put them all together, it spells Voldar. He was here, and he thought Droppo was me. He's got Droppo, and I'm going to find him. Poor Droppo. Surprised to see us? You're under arrest, Voldar. <laughs> Stop playing with toys. Put it away, Kima. We have a weapon that's much more potent than that. As you may know, we are holding Santa Claus a hostage. One false move, and your little ho, ho, ho man will be destroyed. <laughs> All right, what do you want, Volda? These are our terms. First, destroy the toy machine. Second, we will release Santa Claus if you promise to send him and the Earthlings back to their planet. Third, no more joy through toys nonsense on Mars. Well? Well, you win. Are you sure you have Santa Claus? You know we have him. You mean you had him? How did he get out of the cage? Sim, the idiot! <laughs> and how did he get here so, so fast? Uh, Santa Claus has powers that you don't know about. All right, I'm up. Rigna, Hargo, Lomas, report. This is Rigna, Kimo. Hargo and Lomas are with me. Good. I've got Voldar and Stobo. I'll keep them here in the storeroom of the toy shop. Rigna, you come here and take them off my hands. I want Hargo and Lomas to look for a man named Shim. Tell them to search the caves along the transverse canal. Right, Kimo. All right, you two. In there. All 
right, you might as well relax. You're gonna be here for a while. Sit down. of leaving Santa, let me remind you, once you hit that nuclear curtain, there won't even be a whisker left. What are you going to do with us? You're going to stand trial before the council. I don't think you'll be causing any more trouble. Shim, but you won't escape me. You're through. Goldar, well, uh, why don't you uh, relax? You're going to relax permanently. <laughs> for you, Billy. Gee, thanks. Goodbye. Bye. Gee, we had fun. We're going to miss you. Do you think we'll ever meet again? I'm sure you will, children. Thank you, Santa, for bringing happiness to the children of Mars. 
and the Christmas spirit to all of us. Son, from the bottom of my heart, I wish you and yours the very best of everything. Christmas Eve. Yay! Shall we get going? Yay! Goodbye, dear friends. Away! 